Alrighty class, we're going to start with chapter 5 of the digestive system. So what are the chapter goals? Name the organs of the digestive system and describe their locations and functions. Define combining words for organs and know the meaning of the related terminology. Describe the signs and symptoms and disease conditions affecting the digestive system. Now, the digestive system or GI system performs four main functions, ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. You want to try to see what are enzymes which can speed up or slow down processes, and what function do they serve in the digestive process. That will help with your medical terminology. So find out what enzymes do, and do they speed up or slow down the digestive process. Now here is a really good definition of what ingestion is. That's food material taken into the mouth. Now here's the definition of digestion. Food is broken down mechanically and chemically. So mechanically by the teeth, chemically by the stomach and small intestine as it travels through the GI tract. Digestive enzymes aid the breakdown of complex nutrients. So we break down proteins into amino acids. We break down sugars into glucose. And we break down fats into fatty acids or triglycerides so that the GI system, most nutrient absorption, takes place in the small intestine. Digested food passes into the bloodstream through lining of the cells of the small intestine nutrients travel to all the cells of the body and then the cells burn nutrients to release the energy stored in food. How do you eliminate? The body eliminates solid waste materials that cannot be absorbed into the bloodstream. The large intestine concentrates in feces and the waste pass out of the body through the anus. The GI tract begins with the oral cavity. Now What are the major parts of the oral cavity? That's your cheeks, your lips, your hard palate, soft palate, the rugae, the uvula, the tongue, the papillae, the tonsils, the gums, the teeth, and the pharynx. Now, what you do want to look up is what's the definition of mastication, and then what's the definition of deglutition. So if we look at this here again, here's the parts. I'm not going to have uh, pictures of the mouth and say, okay, go ahead and identify this because this is not an anatomy class. But you really do need to know, really, so if you look at cheek, buco, two, lip, sciela or labio, number three, hard palate, palato, four, soft palate, palato, number five is the uvula, uvu, number six, right here, where's number six, tongue, that's glosso, Lingual. Number seven is the tonsil, which are tonsil. And gingiva, number eight, are the gums, right? Gingivitis is the inflammation of the gums. And dento or odonto, number nine, will be the teeth. Okay. Now, what are the anatomical terms of a tooth? The crown, the root, the enamel, dentin, pulp, gingiva, cementum, root, canal and periodontal. So what is a root canal? You've had you've had that probably. Why did you have the root canal done? And the enamel is the hardest substance in the body, but guess what? It's not living material. So once it comes off, there's no way to get it back. So any commercial you see where it says, oh yeah, we'll rebuild the enamel is false. Here's the anatomy of the tooth. Again, these are layers, the enamel, the dentin, the pulp. Here's the crown. Here's the root the bone. Here's the root canal. If you get pain here, they might have to go in there and do something. Okay. Deglutition means swallowing. So here's the nasal cavity. Here's the pharynx. Here's the little bolus of food, which is what you just ate. Here's the epiglottis that has to shut. Otherwise, the food goes down the trachea, which could be a problem. Here's the larynx, the esophagus that goes to your stomach, the trachea, so deglutition is swallowing. The epiglottis closes over the trachea as the bolus of food passes down the, the pharynx toward the esophagus. 
So again, the pharynx is a common pathway, passageway for both air and food. What potential problems do you see with this arrangement if you think that this is a common uh, uh, passageway? And then where does the body address this problem? So looking at this, well, the problem has to be addressed by the epiglottis here. So what are the parts of the stomach? You have the lower esophageal sphincter, the fundus, the greater curvature, the lesser curvature, the rugae, body, antrum, pylorus, and pylorus sphincter. So the esophagus is about 9 to 10 inches, muscular tube, that extends from the pharynx all the way to the stomach. So what do you think a bolus is? How does the esophagus move the bolus toward the stomach? And what are the three parts of the stomach and what are their functions? So when you're reading this stuff, you know, definitely look that up. And again, this is a medical terminology class. It's not an anatomy class, so I am keep emphasizing that. But the more you understand that, and some of you are taking anatomy at the same time, it will help you uh, later on. Here's parts of the stomach, esophagus, fundus, greater curvature, rugae, body. Here's the antrum, the pyloric, pyloric sphincter. Some anatomical terms of the digestive tract, again, um, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, jejunum, ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigma colon, rectum, and you should definitely know where those are. And what's the name of the pigment produced by the breakdown of hemoglobin during red cell destruction? So this is just uh, anatomy of the digestive tract. Villi in the lining of the small intestine. And what's the function of this villi? What are parts of the large intestine? You got the cecum, the appendix, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigma colon, rectum, and the anus. The large intestine extends all the way from the ileum to the anus. The large intestine receives the fluid waste from digestion and stores it until it can be released. And then again, knowing the sections of the colon and what are their locations. Okay, so here's, here's your appendix. Here's your cecum. Here's the ileocecal valve. Ascending colon. All right. Descending colon, sigma colon, rectum, and the anus. What are the parts of the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas? You have liver, gallbladder, you have a common bile duct, a pancreas, a pancreatic duct, and the duodenum. Here's parts of the liver, gallbladder, and here's the liver itself. Here's the stomach. Here's the spleen. Here's the gallbladder that's embedded in the liver. You have a cystic duct. You have a hepatic duct, and they form a common bile duct. Here's the duodenum, the pancreas. Besides producing bile, the liver helps maintain normal blood glucose levels, manufactures blood proteins necessary for clotting, releases bilirubin, which is a pigment in bile, and of course it removes toxins and poisons from the blood. So how does the liver maintain those blood glucose levels? Right. Again, uh, you'll probably discuss that in physiology. Now here's a quiz. What happens if bilirubin cannot leave the body and remains in the bloodstream? Well, you get hyperbilirubinemia, which is also known as jaundice. So it usually causes a yellow discoloration of the skin, whites of the eyes, and mucous membranes. So hyper means what? Yep, bilirubin and anemia. So breaking this down, right? So that, that's why you want to learn this medical terminology so you can really learn what hyperbilirubinemia means. Now pancreas has its functions, so bloodstream, so insulin and enzymes, so it actually works as an endocrine and an exocrine gland. And again, um, as an exocrine gland, it produces en uh, enzymes to digest starch, such as amylase, fat, and proteins. As an endocrine gland, it secretes insulin. And then what's the function of insulin? Right. Food enters through the oral cavity and exits through the anus. So here's how it goes. The salivary glands, oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach. 
and then the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas dump their uh, enzymes and secretory juices into the duodenum. Then it goes to the jejunum, ileum. So those are all three parts of the small intestine. Then it goes to the cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and then anus. And then it leaves the body via the toilet. <laughs> Which term is the first part of the large intestine? It's the cecum, the duodenum, jejunum, or the pylorus. Well, this is part of the stomach. This is part of the small intestine. So a large part of the intestine would be A, the cecum. Now, which term means swallowing? And that would be what? Not mastication, but deglutition. So here's some vocabulary. Here's where we get to the nitty gritty of medical terminology. What's absorption? passage of materials through the walls of the small intestine into the bloodstream. Amino acids are small building blocks of proteins released when proteins are digested. Amylase, this is very interesting, it's an enzyme secreted by the pancreas and salivary to digest starch, right? Rice or anything like that, starch. Anus is the terminal end or opening of the digestive tract to the outside of the body. Your appendix is a blind pouch hanging from the cecum. Really don't use the appendix anymore. Back in the days, um, they thought that the appendix was used to digest uh, um, twigs and branches. So obviously we don't eat twigs and branches anymore. Uh, bile is a digestive juice made in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. Breaks up large fat globules comp composed of bile pigments, cholesterol, and bile salts. And bilirubin is a pigment released by the liver in the bile. And a bowel is in the intestine. Okay. Canine teeth. So canine teeth are pointed dog-like teeth next to the incisors, also called cuspids or eye teeth. The cecum is the first part of the large intestine. The colon consists of ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid segments. You have a common bile duct, which carries bile from the liver and gallbladder to the duodenum, also called the colodocus. Defecation is the elimination of feces from the digestive tract through the anus. Deglutition, again, is swallowing. Dentin is the primary material found in teeth covered by the enamel in the cover and a protective layer of cementum. So these are just layers Digestion is the breakdown of complex foods to simpler forms. Duodenum, first part of the small intestine, measures 12 inches long. Elimination is the act of removal of materials from the body. Emulsification, physical process of breaking up large fat globules into smaller globules. And again, enamel is the hard outermost layer of the tooth, but it really is not living material. So once it's gone, there's no way to get it back. Uh, enzyme, here's that first thing that I asked you. Enzymes are chemicals that speeds up reactions between substances. So enzymes end in ACE, amylase, lipase, protease. So esophagus is a tube connecting the throat to the stomach. Fatty acids, substances produced when fats are digested, a category of lipids, and feces are also known as stool or solid waste. A gallbladder, you've heard of the gallbladder, a small sac under the liver stores the bile. Glucose is a simple sugar. And glycogen is a starch. Glucose is stored in the form of glycogen in liver cells. Okay, so if you eat too much sugar, then it's stored in glycogen. Okay, so insulin will do what? Will bring down blood sugar, but glycogen will increase blood sugar. Hydrochloric acid is a substance produced in the stomach, has a pH of about one to two, uh, necessary for digestion of food. Now, if you're thinking it has a pH of one to two, how come it doesn't digest your stomach? Well, that mucus that you have has a protective lining. Ilium third part of the small intestine you have the incisor which is one of four front teeth in the dental arch insulin is a hormone produced by the endocrine cells of the pancreas transports sugar from the blood into the cells and stimulates glycogen formation by the liver so again insulin 
transport sugar from the blood into the cells. So it brings down blood sugar and then stimulates glycogen formation by the liver. So then it's stored in the liver. The jejunum is the second part of the small intestine. Lipase is a pancreatic enzyme needed to digest fats. The liver is a large organ located in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. It secretes bile, it stores sugar, iron and vitamins, produces blood proteins, destroys worn out red blood cells, filters out toxins, and the normal adult liver weighs about two and a half to three pounds. So very important. Okay. Also helps the body make vitamin D. So really, you have all the vitamin D that you need um, made by the liver, the skin, or the kidneys. Um, but if you don't, if you have a deficiency, if you don't go out in the sun, if you don't eat the right uh, foods, then you can definitely have a de deficiency. And also from a cholesterol standpoint, your liver makes all the cholesterol you will ever need. So you never have to eat animal products to get that cholesterol. Your lower esophageal renal muscles between the esophagus and the stomach. Mastication is chewing. Molar teeth are sixth, seventh, and eighth teeth from the middle on either side of the dental arch. A palate is forms on the roof of the mouth. Pancreas is an organ behind the stomach, produces insulin and enzymes. The papillae is small projections on the tongue. The parotid gland is a salivary gland within the cheek, just anterior to the ear. Now here's an important word, peristalsis is the rhythmic contractions of tubular organs. So even if you were to go upside down and eat an apple, you'll still make it from your mouth to your stomach because of peristalsis. The pharynx, which is the throat, the common passage of food from the mouth and from the air from the nose. The portal vein is a large vein bringing blood to the liver from the intestines. So bringing blood to the liver from the intestines. Proteas is an enzyme that digests protein. Pulp is soft tissue within a tooth, contains nerves and blood vessels. The pyloric sphincter is a ring of muscle at the end of the stomach near the duodenum, opens when a wave of peristalsis passes it. Pylorus is the distal region of the stomach opening to the duodenum. The rectum is the last section of the large intestine connecting the end of the colon and the anus. Rugae are ridges on the hard palate and the wall of the stomach. So that helps churn everything. Remember, if you were to take a, a nap, try to sleep on your left side versus your right side. That'll help you. And saliva is digestive juice produced by salivary glands, contains the enzyme amylase. Here's the salivary glands, parotid, sublingual, and submandibular glands. So before you even start taking a bite of that In-N-Out burger, your salivary glands are working hard to get ready for digestion. The sigmoid colon, fourth and last S-shaped segment of the colon, just before the rectum empties into the rectum. Nope, just before the rectum. The sphincter is the circular ring of muscle that constricts a passage or closes a natural opening. So it takes a while for uh, babies to get used to this control of the uh, uh, sphincter. And that's why they need diapers for early on. And then once they learn to control it, then they no longer need diapers. Um, as we get older, sometimes we'll lose control and then you're going to have diapers later on. So as a child and then when you get older. Now the stomach, muscular organ that receives food from the esophagus, and triglycerides are fat molecules composed of three parts fatty acids and one part glycerol, subgroup of lipids. So you, you get your blood work done and you check your triglyceride level. The uvula is a soft tissue hanging in the middle of the soft palate. And villi are microscopic projections in the wall of the small intestine that absorb nutrients into the bloodstream. So again, I asked these questions early on in the 
the lecture and say, what does this do? What does this do? By looking at the vocabulary, you should be able to um, get this down. Now, the first part was just an introduction to the digestive system.